Happy New Year to everyone watching us Happy today. Happy New Year, Manuvina. Happy New Year, Dr. Roy. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Happy and all New our viewers year. also. Yeah. So, hope, uh, hope 2021 is a better year. 2020, also, uh, forget, I mean, we should forgive, uh, forget that year totally, I think. Yes, yes. Go for better things in 2021. Yeah, very much so. So, um, yes, as you all know, I'm Manubina Chakraborty back with episode six of Let's Talk Inclusion. Uh, as uh, Mrs. Chaudhary has just said, the year 2020 was not very good for any one of us. And uh, that year taught us many lessons. Uh, to me, one very important lesson was to practice empathy. Empathy is uh, defined as the capacity to understand another person's state of mind and emotions. It is indeed a little known giant, which is uh, naturally wired into our brain and when harnessed, plays a crucial role in innovation, change making also, and uh, maybe solving systemic problems. So if we can empathize, then we can uh, better communicate, collaborate, and lead. And on this note, I welcome our guests of the show today, Mrs. Rani Chaudhary and Dr. Devarshi Roy. Good evening once again, Mrs. Chaudhary. Hello, Dr. Roy. Hello. Welcome to Let's Talk Inclusion. And uh, Mrs. Rani Chaudhary is a renowned educationist and an exceptional administrator uh, based in the western part of India. She's also our mentor a constant source of inspiration and an esteemed advisor in I for inclusion. And Dr. Deva Shiroi is a very successful school management consultant, researcher, and uh, internationally acclaimed author on uh, school organizational behavior. He's based in the Eastern part of India. So before we begin our discussion today, may I request you to say something about your exceptional career and life, Mrs. Chaudhary, please. Thank you, Manavita, for such kind words. Uh, well, I have uh, I've been looking after schools for a pretty, pretty long time now. Uh, started in 1988, to be precise, as an administrator and before that as a lecturer in a college. So I've done my MSc in nuclear chemistry, though I wanted to join Baba Atomic Institute, but landed up in the teaching job, and I loved it. Once I joined it, after that, I didn't want to leave and do anything else. Well, from, since 1988 onwards, I've been as a principal of schools. Recently retired about three years back from Delhi Public School, Gandhinagar, and now as a director of DPS Gandhinagar. I worked in various schools, being from the defense background. I've traveled all over uh, India, worked in different, uh, you know, uh, our own schools as well as the private schools. And journey has been good. Thank you very much, ma'am. And here I would like to add that I have been witnessing Mrs. Chaudhary's empathic driven school system for the last 10 years. Uh, first as a parent and then uh, for the last five years. I have been uh, fortunate enough to be working with her very closely. Ah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for everything. Now, Dr. Devashi Roy. Dr. Roy, could you please tell our viewers about your life and work? Well, I am, uh, as you said, from uh, the eastern part of India. I, I stay in uh, the district of Darjeeling. And which gives me an opportunity to work with uh, various types of schools, especially uh, old British boarding schools. I began my journey in uh, school education in uh, 2002, and that's about 18 years now. And uh, first as a consultant, I was working uh, with uh, children, um, um, high school children uh, with career counseling and helping teachers around. And then for a while, I, I, I was into school management. I set up a GDGO Inca public school here and um, I, I set up another school. Um, uh, and then I went back into research. I, I, in 2012, I joined uh, the North Bengal University for a PhD. 
And that kind of uh, opened a new horizon for me where I started uh, researching on uh, various aspects of uh, school behavior. And my research uh, primarily uh, focuses on schools as uh, applied behavioral systems, which is where the, the concept of empathy comes from. So after my PhD, I started researching on empathy-driven school systems and, 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 and the logical, uh, logical conclusions that come to it. First, uh, I developed um, uh, a, a, a systematic uh, instrument to 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 measure psychological safety in schools. Uh, following which, I developed two other instruments uh, which uh, measure empathy-driven leadership and empathy-driven school culture in Indian schools. Because these these instruments are basically meant to be uh, culturally oriented towards the society that they are going to be um, you know used in. And that's where that's where empathy actually uh, brings uh, comes to the fore. I have uh, in the meantime I've written a book uh, which was told the South Asian uh, edition of my book has arrived yesterday, so it will be available for South Asian audience, which actually looks at schools as applied behavioral systems. And my second book on empathic behavior. An empathic behavioral systems is supposed to be released this year, sometime this year. You know, COVID actually messed up the whole uh, plans. So what is empathy? Empathy is uh, basically when we talk about empathy, we generally tend to um, confuse empathy with sympathy, which are two different things. So while sympathy is uh, and invokes a feeling for the other, Empathy is feeling with the other, and that is the difference. So empathy basically uh, technically has three, three, uh, three concept, three constructs which makes empathy. One is the cognitive part where you understand the other, and then you have the affective part where you try to feel with the other, and the compassion part where you do something after after understanding or feeling you you act to mitigate the suffering of the other. Uh, not necessarily that the three parts have to be around. You can understand and act if 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 the feeling is absent all the time. And uh, when I was told about type for inclusion, inclusion is an important part of empathy. And uh, inclusion is a part of what we call psychological safety. As I said, the, I had worked on a scale for psychological safety. Psychological safety is when the child. Uh, feels safe. It's very. It's it's not very difficult to make schools safe, as in physically safe. You have CCTV cameras. You have monitoring. But uh, psychological safety. But a safe school may not bring the feeling of safety to the schools. Goes there. Psychological safety uh, brings in that part, and inclusion is an important part. So that's what to work on at this point of time. Yeah, very good information. Thank you very much, Dr. Roy. And uh, thank you very much for sharing your views on this. Now, as we place the concept of empathy within the concept of schools, I think uh, Mrs. Chaudhary is the best person to give us details about it. I have worked with quite a few school systems in India and abroad and try to identify the key areas of individual school administrators. I believe that empathy along with trust plays the biggest role in Mrs. Chaudhary's administration. Perhaps that is the reason she has always been able to provide with an inclusive environment in all her schools. So ma'am, could you share your thoughts regarding this with us, please? See, uh, Dr. Roy just explained about empathy. Uh, normally, say when we talk of inclusion, empathy is just first part of it. Like, you know, I feel I see it's a journey of a thousand miles inclusion, and empathy is just a first step towards it. If I'm empathetic, I, if I feel for others, like we say that you have to feel what the, feel other person's emotions. You know, if I, so I've always uh, believed, you know, running the school like when. I, always have been advising teachers as well as staff and children also 
but see you treat others as you would like to be treated if i am expect something you know like if i teachers have basically i'm talking of the school system teachers have they come to the class we categorize children we you know have the good children are given more attention other ones are ignored so normally i tell them i say don't do that because you won't like to be done that i explain that if i am taking some session with you all if i ignore you how will you feel so you have to make the child in the feel special say that you have to make the child feel as though you know you are there for him or her the trust that the child must have in you to share all the fears all the problems that they have and now they should not have the fear if i go to the teacher or if i go to somebody you know that they say no we come later no i mean i can't okay please tell me later i don't want to hear or something so i feel the first step that we should have in the schools i believe that we must learn to listen to the child when we listen to the child we know their problems if i feel <coughs> and it try to i mean i feel that empathy can be cultivated also during the years and if we cultivate empathy in children right from the childhood i believe we can cultivate from nursery also when they are you no know, 4 year 5 year old and all so if we cultivate empathy in them they will definitely grow out to be better individuals you know they will not like the problems we have in the schools bullying by the children that will not happen because you know, like if you feel for the person's problems then like when we say empathy i don't uh, normally insist on you know that you get so involved in other person's you know uh, problems that you forget your own problems that also being you get caught in the web that also should not be there so you have to maintain a proper balance with the teachers if i don't trust them if they can't come and tell me their problem they start hiding from me the school will not prosper for prospering in the school in the school itself the concept of empathy has to be you know instilled like we have to uh, you know giving examples like when we have suppose in the classes they because generally it is at times it's the uh, in the type of bullying we have in the schools is discrimination when they are in the color of the skin state a social status these things are there so normally in the school what we try is okay when we have the or the you know the background that you come from religion that you come from so you have them celebrate all religions have them celebrate you know then the most of them together so that part of it that you feel for the other person also increases that is very very important in the school because if we make them you know if we make them understand that out of sympathy don't do things for them for others like you said there's a difference between sympathy and empathy but if you are empathetic in nature you will definitely become a def, uh, you know bring change in the school community and as they are future citizens if they go and get out to be better citizens better you know individuals they will definitely make a change in our society when they go out also so children have to be children as well as teachers like i normally feel that we have to work in a triangle the parent teacher and the student we have to have trust in each other we have to ha listen to their problems we cannot ignore we cannot ignore or we cannot discriminate between children in the school teachers also if i can't solve their problem at least i can try you know i am not saying that we are always able to you know that 100% solutions are there no the solutions are not there it is a very very in a big subject like when you talk of inclusion in the schools inclusion is first when the uh, teachers or the students when you start feeling for the discriminated ones whether intellectually intellect they are different uh, children once they start feeling towards them only then we can say that okay we can think of including them inclusion is you know it's, it's uh, very difficult we have been trying a trying you know in the school but i will not say that we have succeeded 100% yes efforts have been there all the time so that at least whatever we can do for them if i can make bring a small change in somebody's life definitely it is going to make me happy as well as the other person happy very true mrs chaudhary thank you very much for your views sharing your views Now, Doctor Roy, uh, would you like to say something about the basic approach of the schools in general in India? 
do you think that the approach in, is inclusive? Is the school's approach inclusive in India for students with learning differences? Uh, Madam, uh, Madam said uh, two things which are very important and very correct. One is the trust. Very important. Uh, now the trust, you know, has uh, it goes beyond empathy because empathy has many dimensions. Uh, and absolutely right that you spoke about the difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy is hierarchical. It's a top-down approach. You look down people and sympathize, whereas empathy is when you level it. Uh, one, uh, you spoke about the trust. The trust also is, uh, is reflected in the organizational justice system in school. How, how you, what kind of a justice system you have? Do you punish students, whether you, are, whether you have a restorative justice system or whether you have a, a justice system which, which wants revenge? Uh, so trust, trust has multiple dimensions, all are important. And, and you very rightly uh, uh, emphasized on that. Empathy, uh, I'll say two more things before I move on. Uh, empathy, as you said, um, uh, at times teachers have a problem empathizing in the sense there's an overwhelming thing. In a class, if there are 25 students all requiring help, all coming from disturbed uh, backgrounds, then the teacher uh, generally uh, faces something called a compassion fatigue. We call that technically, we call it a compassion fatigue. Compassion fatigue is very, very, very debilitating. I mean, it leads to um, attrition rates. It leads to people uh, quitting their jobs. It leads to other mental problems. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons now coming back to the problems in Indian schools, this uh, is because I'm wrong here. Devashi, I think there is some problems in your internet connection. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I might have been moving too much. So uh, the compassion fat. Uh, so uh, one of the one of the things, one of the reasons for compassion fatigue is when schools are when teachers are overburdened with students. When you have when you have very high teacher student ratios which a, a teacher in a class of 65 70 students cannot actually be empathic towards all of them that that thing cannot take place now uh, coming back to your question uh, there are some fundamental flaws in indian school system one is that uh, we live in a post colonial society and so schools in our our kind of societies we we have somehow inherited that that structure the model, whether it works or not, things are changing now, but 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 it, it not, not as fast as it should. One, schools are very unforgiving, and they're very mechanistic and hierarchical. When I say mechanistic, schools are very strong on rules, and uh, the breaking the rules is supposed to be uh, a very 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 horrid crime. Secondly, schools follow a very linear model. Uh, which is uh, intelligence plus hard work equal to success. It is not really so, but it, it's uh, it, schools follow this model because it's convenient. It's simple. So if a child is not doing well, either he is not intelligent, he obliques she, or not or lazy. That's why the success is not achieved. Uh, intelligence itself, as Mamu would know more than me is a very gray construct and, and uh, it has multiple orientations, manifestations, outcomes. Uh, uh, there was a very famous um, uh, study by Lewis Thurman with Thurman's termites, where he had a set of very, very highly in so-called intelli uh, intelligent kids and he traced their successes and most of them weren't successful. In fact, uh, one kid, who was not qualified for for Terman, Terman's exercise because he was not intelligent enough, went on to win the Nobel Prize in physics. So, so intelligence has a lot of lot of dimensions. Now you have Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences, you have uh, Daniel Goldman's EQ, you have social intelligence, Edward Thorndike. Which one would you take? Which one would you look at? 
Now, secondly, school outcomes are, are influenced by numerous factors. So this whole system of standardized testing, where we 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 kind of um, uh, uh, compare two kids on test, is not logical because the two kids do not have all the variables exactly the same. They have they're coming from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different resources. So unless you have a set risk variables kind of a situation. Standardized testing leads to exclusion. Ma'am said the 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 kids who are better are given more attention because it's convenient. It's convenient for them. It is convenient for for schools to do that. Now, success is we have to understand is inherently unpredictable, and we live and schools are essentially what we would term as chaotic systems. In a chaotic system, as you uh, you know. Uh, uh, it's the butterfly effect. Uh, a butterfly flapping its wings in, say, uh, Brazil, does it lead to a, a, a storm or a cyclone in, in uh, Florida, a typhoon in Florida? So a child being, being uh, spoken to harshly might lead to catastrophic consequences, which we, we couldn't imagine. Uh, I know of a child who was very good in maths, one of the school that, and suddenly he started, you know, um, not taking into maths. He came they came one day the again. Uh, they were she problem again. Again? Yeah. Am I back? Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just do let me know because uh, there could be a problem. Yeah. So uh, I know of a child who uh, who who suddenly went down in his maths course, and then came out one day. The maths teacher had come to school uh, after having taken a cold bath because his geyser wasn't working, and this is in the hills, so he was in a bad mood and had snapped at the child. Now, what happens in school system? What happens in school systems are that you don't have a feedback loop. Suppose you go to a hospital and the doctor gives you a wrong injection. He gets a feedback there and then. The patient either goes worse or dies. Can you hear me now? It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in a school, the child don't tell you there and then that I didn't like it or something has gone wrong. And you know it many, many days, months, years later, maybe. And that is something that that is a barrier to empathic uh, behavior in Indian schools. Now, there's another thing. Now, uh, school systems in our society, in, in, in post-colonial society, we are driven by control and conformity. That's why we still have uniforms with uh, ties, neckties, which are, I don't know, even at 45 degrees centigrade. And uh, we have uh, uh, the answering back is supposed to be, again, a, a crime which is uh, supposed to be, you know, you, you throw, out of, throw the kid out of school. Not answering back, but, uh, Dr. Roy, it's asking questions. To show that you are no, we, we, we do promote that. I, at least I've been promoting that teacher must allow children to. A noisy class is always better. You learn better in that than being just one way. Then the teacher is just, you know, one, uh, saying the thing in a one way narration is not the class. Class is, I have a question, and we always encourage the children that you must ask a question. If teacher says, I multiply this, and this is what say, why? Why is it so? If I have a doubt or something like that, so we, and I, normally I'd be advising teachers. The child asks the question, never ever say, sit down, don't ask. No. If suppose you feel that class being disturbed, you can always tell the child, hey, not now. What we'll do is, just now let me finish this, we'll come back to you. But don't rebuke a child. Because child will never ask. It's there with the other, even grown-ups also. If we are in a meeting, if we are you know, afraid of being snubbed, we'll control ourselves. We'll not be you know, ready to ask questions because we don't know what is going to be the reaction. And like when you were saying, oh, the punishments and all uh, might be, you know, like, but I have like, since uh, at least I have tried to instill this in the school, uh, public schools are generally, you know, not so orthodox, like you said, post-colonial and all the things are a little bit different. Like when we have, we have the student, 
you know uh, uh, your school captains and all they are given the authority that okay you will sit and decide what is to be done i have had children and all like when they were not you know uh, i had i have been very very fortunate very blessed one you know that i have got lot of love for my children and now also after five years they have passed out and still if i meet them somewhere they'll come make it a you know point to come and cross over and come and meet you so i remember there was a boy you know who was there was very very indisciplined like you no know, so we had a he was in the football team so i told him i said see child there's no question in punishing them corporal punishment a big no you can't touch a child nothing that i've always you know practiced this you can't tell a child you can't turn the child outside the class also you can't discriminate like this but you have to sit down and explain to them you know you have a talk with them like i told him i said child see this is what i require you do it no problem you decide okay the i said these are two things and all way i will not call punishment if i want to reprimand this child i will not call it punishment we are you know telling them that okay this is what because you have not done this this is what you cannot you choose okay you tell me what should i do child will say okay ma'am no you are right no then you have to have the you know type of uh, your know, understanding with the children that they can i have had children of 11 and 12 coming and arguing with me like when they somebody said some teacher must have said you can't talk you know might be you are getting friendly with the girl there one boy came and asked me ma'am can't we talk to the girls so i had to tell them no child of course you can talk there's nothing like that we are saying you can't talk to a girl or something like that but then is a kind of social behavior because we are live in a social setup and also we have to see this you now you can't have the uh, walk hand in hand, hand with the girl in the school corridors so you have to be you have to there are certain things and all you yourself will not do it so they they understand you accept and explain to them you have a talk with them i think the child right from 5 year onwards they understand everything and if you support them you will get unconditional support from them and we have been uh, uh, having this in the school with a lot of uh, you know like when you said about when we teaching them empathy we have the joy of giving we tell children okay you get something share with the poor ones and you know share with somebody who doesn't have and i was surprised to see the younger ones also they uh, part with their toys you know that what they like and more willingly you know this is a response is so high from parents and children that at then we don't know what to do with the amount that we have so we tell them you go in the, the, the children in the senior classes you know sensitizing by taking them to old age home because they must like we want that we they should be respecting their own people elders at, at home also so respecting you know the teachers in the school or your fellow students because that is on trust and respect was also, also very very important in this you know that we are when we talk of uh, inclusion talk of empathy these are few things that we have in we basically when we are talking of inclusion like we had written over here the empathy is inclusion is acceptance kindness and respect these are the few things you know like we must emphasize we should develop these qualities and these are the ones if i have somebody if i don't accept like when we are when we are having saransh in our uh, Uh, this uh, uh, school for special children for they are coming in the same bus so we are teaching children you have to accept them you know this if you don't accept them and all somehow inclusion is not going to happen for inclusion empathy i again i said is the first step then acceptance of those uh, children we are trying hard and i won't say like 100% success but then yes some success has been there for uh, you know at least i feel my staff 100 staff was there if not all of them at least 80% staff has been you know they have accepted they have cultivated empathy you know even if they didn't have so i it makes me feel happy you know when we see that the others are you know okay responding at least they are you know uh, for children even if because like you will you will said that our schools are like that because most of people are now looking at this as just as a job i come so i finish my work i go without having any feeling for the children if that doesn't stay school cannot prosper you know the punishments and those you no know, very compartmental uh, you know distinctions to be uh, taken where uh, uh, like 
you very well brought out doctor or brought out about the punishment system whether it is going to be you know something the child understands or it is going to be destructive like it's going to really uh, traumatize the child child like say child will not know the teacher will just snap at the child child will be wondering what happened what did i say they don't even realize that they have done something wrong that they should be spoken to like this so these things do happen in uh, most of schools i don't think so our schools at presently they are they can be, they will be inclusive of the physical disabilities yes but intellectual disabilities if they having the inclusion into the schools is will take some time it is requires lot of work to be done physical is fine intellectual i still feel that is going to be a little bit difficult for us to it's a longer journey longer and harder journey though of course we'll keep trying yeah i think you you got something to say so uh, ma'am uh, let's when we are talking about the learning differences so not only the physical uh, differences but also intellectual differences so uh, how do you think a school community can be more empathetic in order to provide an inclusive environment to all its students irrespective of their differences in learning so um, intellectual differences i want to say so uh, yeah, it is it's, it's a tough job i agree i told you it's a tough job you know we have been trying for almost 3 4 years now so for people to accept intellectually different children is a big big task you know because they it's very difficult very difficult because uh, it's not so easy to handle them uh and yes parents of these children they will be more empathetic because they know what it is like for other people to be empathetic and to go through those emotions is very very difficult for other uh, you know like when you say not racial or might be social or something they are very easy you know they these things can be handled easily but uh, intellectual uh, i feel in the Uh, children from regular stream they should be coming and meeting these uh, children if we can have them in the classes they might be uh, like when we have the autistic child or something uh, like that if we can have them in the classes in the regular stream is uh, will be a better way but it is very 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 challenging job very very challenging because we are still finding the ways you know that how to do it separately yes. when we get them yes we can have the special educators for them we can do that but including them inclusion of these children in the mainstream school it is going to take some time in uh, india because i uh, wonder if we are re- actually really ready for it yes and because i think we have uh, the, the population is vast in india and yes. that is the problem so every class has 35 to 40 children at least very difficult very difficult class with one teacher teacher student ratio in a class is uh, one is to 40 maybe and in in this scenario it is really very difficult to include children with learning differences yes, and that, that is the reason as um, you are saying i also agree that we are trying to provide an inclusive school environment the saranj foundation is situated within the, the campus of dps gandhi nagar and as you said that we have the transport they avail the same transport facility the same they school, use the same facility same grounds they are there with the same children but in the class teaching them together is going to be very very challenging it is really difficult in india because of the population as i feel ma'am and um, so what we are providing is an integrated school system not uh, an inclusive school system inclusive classrooms but yes yeah inclusive, inclusive school yeah inclusive school environment um i mean countries like uh, denmark finland uh, children learn empathy i think devashi is back let us just yes yeah, so. uh, they <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I live in a village. <laughs> And that too, when this happens uh, down the hills, so there is some uh, problem. It's a beautiful place. All right, a beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, we are discussing about the inclusive classroom and the problems are that are there to include all the children with uh, different learning styles or learning differences in the same classroom when you are not there. So uh, what is your opinion about it, by the way, Dr. Roy? <laughs> First, I think, um, one, uh, ma Madam spoke about uh, trust again, and, uh, uh, and uh, that is, again, very important I, I, at the point where I broke off. And then um, I think we have to understand one thing, psychological safety, the thing that I keep harping on, is actually an outcome of an empathic school. As you said, it's, it all begins at empathy. Now, when you have an empathic school system, the outcome is psychological safety. What is psychological safety? Psychological is basically the, uh, a situation where a child is not scared of making mistakes. Uh, that is psychological safety. Now, when we look at it under that parameter, then then we have then we then we suddenly have this whole concept of uh, inclusive classrooms coming in. An inclusive classroom is inclusive, as uh, Ma'am said, on 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 so many parameters. Now, uh, one of them could be uh, you. Children get excluded for race, religion, etc., etc., but also on intelligence, aptitude, orientation. Because uh, again, again, the the whole concept is that teachers want to make classrooms convenient. They have a set syllabi which they have to finish in so many classroom sessions, and they don't they don't want a disruption in their module. But as, uh, now, when I say all this, I I I I, I say this with a caveat. I am not, uh, ma'am. Uh, the uh, uh, gone again. Gone again. Point about the other children, fine, racial, intellectual is okay. But mainly, what we say, like when we talk of Saraj, when we are talking of those kids, you know. Yeah. Those things become a bit difficult, you know, accommodating, uh, including, including in the mainstream. Others, uh, yes, those things can be managed. Yeah. yeah. Racial, your social, your uh, little bit of, you know, might be, you know, that 90%, 40%, those are okay, they are, can be managed. But uh, when we talk of Saranj, our main thing is that okay, if we get get can get these children to the mainstream. Yes, intellectual differences. Children with intellectual differences. No, intellectual is also two kinds. So this is something different. When we say intelligence wise and intellectual, this if a child is you know might be not uh, very intelligent or something, but is moderate or is uh, you know average child. Right. Nowadays we. Um, uh, give emphasis more on uh, multiple intelligence theory. So if even if we, uh, we, I, we if we don't want to say that a, a child is intellectually superior or the other way around, there there is a difference. There is a difference, and that is because of the neurological condition that they are having. Heavy. And yes, and that is the reason uh, we. When uh, we uh, uh, started Saranj, you and I am talking about, we found it difficult to accommodate those children in the mainstream classrooms. And maybe that is the reason we... Uh, uh, because especially our unseen children, they are, they are coming because they were not accepted in the school, in the mainstream school, so they are coming here. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And the best thing is they are getting an inclusive school environment. They are availing school bus. They're using the same playground, same cafeteria, and the same school building as well. Yeah. And yeah. they become self sufficient without any home. Yes. Uh, there is a problem. Doc I can see him, Dr. Devarshi, but. 
I can't just allow him to the broadcast studio. The internet problem? I think so. I think so. I cannot cannot just give him permission to enter into the broadcast studio. I think he will be coming. No problem. Uh, yeah, he's here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Dr. Roy, uh, what we are talking about, I just wanted to say that the country, countries like uh, Denmark, Finland, children learn empathy in their classrooms. Uh, the, this learning is uh, important not only for uh, students, but also for every member of a school community. Uh, uh, could you please tell us, Dr. Roy, about the assessment battery which you have developed to measure empathy and psychological safety in schools? You are frozen again. <laughs> Dr. Roy, you are frozen again. I think it's difficult. It's extremely difficult. The hills of the Dar of Darjeeling, not, and, and they are actually not allowing him to interact with uh, people who are in the western part of India. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, ma'am, uh, so let us uh, just uh, conclude here. We really have had an enriching discussion. Before we conclude, uh, do you have any advice for our viewers who are part of education system, not only in India, but also elsewhere in the world on how to be mm -hmm. empathetic? enough to provide the learners with uh, equal opportunities. The main thing in the class, normally I tell them okay, we should not be judgmental. This is one thing I would like to advise that don't judge and don't, you know, categorize a child. Don't judge them. If we pass some judgment without knowing, you know, we, at times we don't know this, their uh, situation, what they are going through, what emotions they are going through. If we can't know, we should not be judgmental. Oh no, you are like this, you are like this. That's so that should not be there. That is one thing I normally tell. And same, you you know, try to you know go through the emotions what they are going through. If that is you can achieve that, you can achieve and all, I think some percentage, some little bit empathetic, you become. Uh so yes, yes, Dr. Roy. Uh, we're waiting for you. <laughs> please unmute yourself. Could you please unmute yourself, Dr. Roy? Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, uh, yes. yes. Uh, <clears throat> before, before I disappear again, I, uh, uh, I have a few suggestions if, 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 uh, if possible. Uh, we could discuss them for making schools empathic. Many of them have been discussed already by ma'am. Uh, I have been hearing you, by the way, on my wife's mobile. <laughs> so, uh, so one, uh, schools, uh, and I'm not saying this for all schools, but some, schools should treat students as uh, children and not customers, oblique subordinates, oblique adults, oblique offenders. Two, we should uh, recognize and celebrate diversity of race, religion, community, but again, also of capabilities, orientation, aptitudes. All, all students should be cherished sons and daughters of the school. Now, that is where there is a problem in India. Every year after the board exams, you see this huge full page advertisements in newspaper. 99%, 99.9%. But the child getting 65% is also a son or a daughter of the school. And the school should cherish or take oblique take blame for his or her, uh, uh, you know, uh, results also. That's something we don't do. In psychology, we call it successorship bias, where we, we, we take the successes, we, we, we try to put own the successes of others. Uh, we should again stretch stress on psychological safety as a positive school outcome instead of the results in the board exams we should see how confident 
how how right. how happy our children are that that is something we should prioritize uh again we should practice an organizational justice system which wherein we we correct students when they're wrong as as you put it correctly uh, which is not retributive which is not not supposed to be retributive in nature taking taking revenge but it should be a relational and restorative exactly the things that you spoke of uh we should encourage empathy driven school leadership and again uh, as you said empathy can be learned and an empathetic school system coming from the leadership if the school leadership emphasizes on empathy the teachers will be empathetic and as you said the children in turn will be empathetic and that will lead to an empathetic society something which is in uh, great need as of now so so it it is a value chain that emerges from that we should have an empathy driven school culture now that school culture how do you build that school culture from the leadership downwards and here uh, i often hear this refrain that the something that we spoke about earlier that teachers are too overwhelmed by the by by the by the number of students or through compassion fatigue one way of of uh, of avoiding compassion fatigue is to teach uh, is to like kind of uh, impart to teachers this knowledge that empathy you can have empathy for a child even without feeling feeling with the child i mean suppose I, i'll give an example suppose a child has lost a parent unfortunately then the if the teacher has to feel with the child under the circumstances the teacher might have lost a parent and the teacher will think how she or he felt when she or obliquely had lost the her parent and that causes a lot of emotional fatigue emotional lot of emotional load so if you can understand the situation without feeling and act on it to to kind of uh, dissipate the situation for the child it's good enough and that that is where a uh, compassion fatigue can be avoided one of the reasons and it 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 is done in in organizational circumstances okay. other thing is to strive to know each and every student and their family one thing that my school when i went to in the earlier years was that the principal knew the name of each and every child very important increases the child's belongingness to the school very important nowadays not i have come across schools which have 8000 students 350 teachers the teachers don't know their own colleagues forget about the students so you are so that is de facto a factory it is no longer a school so you cannot have an empathy driven factory factory you cannot have an empathy you have to have an empathy driven school now another very important thing is that school administrators and managers should know that the school boundary does not end with the school boundary the school boundary where the wall is that is not the end of the school that is not where a school ends a school beyond ends the, at the child's beyond, home yeah, yeah. beyond the school, the school boundary school. yes so there have been lot of research on where where very interesting research on where school boundaries end <laughs> i mean uh, uh, um, uh, uh, synonymous to research on where our brains end i mean does it end at the forehead or ends uh, beyond it so the school boundary does not end there now does not end with the physical boundary the school boundary ends at the child's home so teacher should make it a point to visit homes and at the same time parents should be made a part of this teaching learning process only then they will realize even you see the empathy has to be there with the parents also the parents should also realize what a teacher goes through in a class and a teacher should be able to realize what a parent goes through in his or her home what the child faces at home only then you can have an empathy driven system which will lead to Uh, 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 a better outcome. Um, again, 
uh, harping on i'm very anti standardized testing because it doesn't no good but we are, live in a society and a system that we can't get out of it but yes, uk i was, I, I was just it. reading an article yes, yesterday yes yeah ha uk has come out with a system which uh, which will help teachers evaluate students on on numerous parameters and that i think is 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 a better alternative to standardized testing when will it happen in india i don't know there is a very famous educationist who writes uh, in who who was a teacher and who is a best selling author in the us john taylor gatto he writes against standardized testing and he's got his point uh, secondly we have to keep our school sizes to an optimal level that is very important now how we do it now the 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 argument made is the the demand exceeds supply by 10x for every school seat that is offered in india the demand is 10 times more so how do we so so in order to get everybody to school how why why can't we have big, larger schools we should have hub and spoke schools in my opinion you should have one big schools with infrastructure and small schools around it it is a system that is practiced in many parts of the world you mentioned oh schools are uh, are chaotic or unpredictable we talk about finland being one of the the best education systems in the world and very empathic but do we speak about the other part finland has the highest rate of adolescent suicide rates among the oecd countries Finland adolescent suicide rates are highest among the OECD countries. Now it has come down by by certain points, but still it's very high. Why? There must be some point in that chaotic system that is not being addressed, and it is virtually impossible to have a perfect school system. Very difficult. Very difficult to have. Yeah, virtually perfect. impossible. <laughs> I yeah, don't think so it exists you know Finland, but the, the, exist the negative because. part of Finland is never spoken yeah. uh Finland one of the reasons that uh, that certain uh, researchers have come up with for this situation in Finland is that uh, Finland has a close society where males are not supposed to uh crib or cry or or let out their emotions feelings but others said no it's due to the weather <laughs> so so you never know what what's happening there but the truth is that uh, i would suggest an ad, uh, 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 an annual safety audit and an emo, uh, psychological safety audit and an empathy audit in all schools in india it's not difficult to do the instruments are available and that would lead and and that would lead to just just like we have competition on marks on on board exam marks that might lead to having which school is more empathic than the other and that would be a functional thing to happen i think under the circumstances um and and you would know where you going wrong and corrective measures can be taken and we should reward empathic behavior among teachers and students i i uh, it, we there are agencies we do who do that but empathic behavior should be rewarded unless you reward the behavior it is going to go into extinction a person who is empathic will feel okay i am empathic but nothing happens so why being empathic because empathic leads to empathic is not being empathy is empathic is not easy leads to cognitive but, uh, doctor i i differ here because i feel if i am being empathetic just to be rewarded then i i mean it's, uh, it's going the other no, way around no. isn't it so no I no no i i think i made a mistake in putting it forward i didn't mean just right. being rewarded what i meant was i meant to be in the school like we should have we, all all children should coexist learn to coexist this is something i feel where we have the okay empathy plays plays a big role then we can make other other persons you know like when we say basic definition is when we undergo their emotions you know when we realize that when we feel their emotions that is a one 
So I no, think I, I think I I I I didn't put that correctly. I I what I meant was this. When you reward a behavior, and I don't mean reward, go and give him a chocolate or a, or something, but at least a pat on the back, then they know that it is an accept a, a, an empathic behavior is acceptable behavior. If not, then what happens, especially in the case of teachers, is that the behavior will go into extinction. And when I say reward, I don't mean that. I don't mean reward physically, but if you appreciate that behavior. Then people will understand. Yeah. But still, like, uh, you what know, you like, like, But if you don't appreciate the behavior, what it happens is the 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 behavior goes into extinction. Not, and I'm talking about the behavior at a primary stage. Once you've brought in the empathic system and everybody knows how to act in a particular way, then the reward. Public appreciation is no longer necessary. Then it becomes a normal way of life, normal culture of the school to behave in a particular way. This is what I think. I think we should. I, I mean, I would like to work towards making it a normal culture, you know, in the schools and all. Like I, yes. you know, if talking about the displaying, like to, I just want to put one word. Like till the time I was as a principal of the school, I have never displayed the list of the toppers. Never, never. Not even in the newspaper. Not even in the school also because. I said marks are all right. No, marks have nothing to do with the kind of person you are. Marks can be, you know, somebody works harder, you get better marks, but that doesn't somehow is a be all and end all. No, marks is something okay. You get marks, fine, but we have never, never displayed. Like when we have smaller classes, I said no, first, second, third, everybody should be equal in the class. Don't why do you have you know uh, judgment? Why you being judgmental? This one is better because parents are competing. You know. My child got A one. My child got A two. Parents, so we had to counsel parents regarding this. I said, don't become like that. Your child. I mean, as adults, so you know, like I understand their problem. So they said, no, ma'am, we are two, you know, sister-in-laws in the family. If my son gets A two and the other one's son gets A one and all, so our in-laws say that, what are you doing? You are not teaching your child properly. No, exactly. they are not. So I said, don't do. Like when we are there, I tell. I say when we give the certificates at the end of the year to children. I make sure I said each and every child should get a certificate, whether just for being very friendly. Okay, give academics, you know. Okay, they don't understand smaller classes, best. But every child must get something or the other because I believe every child or every human being has got some positive, you know, uh, thing about him or her. Correct. Something. Correct. Everything can't be negative. So. And, and I wish everybody would think like you because I I come across this newspaper advertisements every year. Last year, however, I came across one school advertisement from a school in Kershaw in 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 uh, Darjeeling, uh, which said we are not putting up the marks of our students because all our students are winners. And I really like that. That's the kind of school I'd like my daughter to go to. Uh, that's absolutely correct. Absolutely. In that part of the country, uh, I must say in Kershaw, Darjeeling, uh, schools are Kalimpong. Uh, schools are really good over there. Right, Dr. Roy? Yes, they have seen very hard times. They uh, Running a school in Darjeeling in the hills is not easy. I mean, you have monsoons, you have the cold. And uh, unfortunately, you have other uh, uh, problems also, and uh, and the kids over there, and uh, frankly speaking, the the difference I see, to be honest with you, and the ki other kids are that the kids are still kids. If they have a school holiday, they are happy. Uh, I have seen kids who are very sad when the schools are on holiday because they're going to miss their lessons, and I feel uh, that's not the way a child should be, you know, and this. This comes from this excess excess competitiveness, which which has uh, you know and and one one very important thing about this um, uh, these uh, this emphasis on marks, the emphasis on marks which some schools uh, put on and they, the the emphasis on these uh, board exam marks and these newspaper advertisements, this is not for the children, this is for their own marketing. And the thing is, you're owning the success of a few students, 
but when the when the when the when the, those children who are not faring that well in those exams you are not owning their loss when you are not owning owning their their bad results when when a child uh, uh, scores uh, not uh, scores mediocre in an exam then the school doesn't own that mediocre result then it's the child's fault the child is either not intelligent or lazy but when the child fares well then the school will come up with a full page ad owning that result and and you will be one of the minorities madam who who, who did not put up uh, the the uh, the scores because that is a trend in india and that is destroying school education in india it's a whole education system is we blame because what happens like when we say we don't want to put emphasis on marks but what happens is when these children after 12th when they go because our system is like this they they admission into good institutions after school are based on these marks which luckily or you know fortunately cbsc is thinking of having a common test you know so if that comes in or might be the school will cease to you know or the parents will uh, also back off that they you don't have to score 90% 80% so they said that for every is going to be like need and all the common entrance exam is going to be there on the basis of which we will get the institutions i don't know how successful it that will be that, but uh, that is required for two reasons one is that marks have become irrelevant i'll tell you why uh there is a college in delhi where the cut off marks are 100% for the economics honors and commerce or whatever cut off marks are 100% now you have 65 seats and there are 120 kids coming with say 100% marks so the marks become irrelevant there so you have to have some other uh, basis of admitting those students and not marks so it has gone to that level now i mean peop- uh, and 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 that is where a sat kind of an exam Uh, like the one they have in the US, I think we do do well. I don't know how when it's going to come. I know, because, because I remember I always feel very sorry for the 12th standard children. I should tell them here teachers are after them for marks, their parents are after them. So I should counsel the parents. Say, they will your children go. You tell me, you know, they come to us, ma'am. What to do now? My parents are my want this because they want to live their dreams through me. So it's a very 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 complicated uh, situation. No, like when we, I mean, this. Uh, the argument can go on regarding this but uh, what i have like i have for with my children i have seen and also i have never uh, had the thing i say you do whatever you want to do and you won't believe that my daughter who did not do her um, become engineer or doctor is me doing much better than my daughter who is a doctor no. she is doing very well in life so she says what i don't even remember my school marks you know what they were i don't even care about that so it is like up to the individual and It's, it's very very complicated, you know. I, you, it, you fail to understand what to do. I really have my heart goes out to these children of board examinations, you know, because they are pressurized from home, they are pressurized from the school also. They are because it's the school wants good result because they want to uh, feel good about that. Madam, in the uh, Indian context, uh, it's the not a win-win situation. If it's not that. <laughs> in the yeah. indian context you know the uh, kids have become redundant the, can you hear me yeah yes okay. uh, degrees have become redundant the degrees have become redundant the day that phds are looking for jobs in, in, in as you know sweepers in morgues that is what has happened in uh, in, in several states you know 65 phds looking for menial jobs so so the degree is redundant now i know of engineers who are looking for uh, gangman's jobs or you know uh, uh, replicant and they're not getting those jobs as uh, so because they're so, studying without any aim you know they it's like it's like a you know uh, everybody feels that i want to either do engineering or i want to become a doctor so they enter that stream because you know that to, just to get the stamp that i'm engineer but they don't realize because in our education system is you no know, degrees are there but skills are overlooked if you are not skilled you they all everybody wants you know white collar job but the skills are not there you can be i remember when we take, have the, the candidates for even for the teaching also when they come they all are graduates post graduates but when you see their you know general not standard you know general standard of knowledge i will not say gk or something general awareness you can say 
It's absolutely not. They, there's no skills at all. They don't have any skills. They just have the degree with them. They have got two degrees. I've got three degrees, but there's no skills. So. So uh, we really had a very, had a very very enriching discussion today, uh, Mrs. Chaudhary and Dr. Roy. Now it's time to conclude. So uh, I'd like to say thank you to both of you on behalf of I for Inclusion. Madam is uh, an advisor in I for Inclusion itself. Our inspiration, our source of motivation, and Dr. Roy is also uh, and yes of course in future we would like to collaborate with you dr roy and would like to know more about your uh, battery assessment battery that you have developed but uh, today we really do not have much time here. Uh, hopefully we'll have uh, one more discussion very soon anytime so, uh, thank you for having me uh, thank you thank you very much uh, madam no, it thank was you. really very nice talking to you, Dr. Roy. Very nice interaction. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was uh, very nice. Or um, it was uh, humbling on my part, actually, an honor to talk to you. And uh, I am so glad that we we have educationists like you. All is not lost in India. Very true. And I am sure all our viewers had an enriching experience today. So uh, that's all for tonight. We will come back soon with the seventh episode of Let's Talk Inclusion. So please keep an eye on our Facebook page for further announcement in this regard. Till then, goodbye and good night. Thank you, Mrs. Chaudhary. Thanks a lot. Bye.